Hey friends, so when we left off yesterday, um, Ramona had just crossed out her sister and was having a little tantrum. So, uh, nobody could make her pick up her crayons, nobody could make up, nobody, not her mom, not her dad, not the principal, not even God. Now, never mind, Ramona heard her mother say, poor little girl. She's upset. She's had a very difficult day. But sympathy made things worse. I am not upset, yelled Ramona. And yelling made her feel so much better, she continued. I am not upset. And I'm not a little girl. And everybody is mean to laugh at me. She threw herself on her bed and pounded her heels on the bedspread. But pounding on the blankets was not bad enough. Far from it. Ramona wanted to be wicked, really wicked. So she swung around and beat her heels on the wall. Bang, bang, bang. That noise ought to make everybody good and mad. Mean, mean, mean. Mean, 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 she yelled in time to her drumming heels. She wanted to make her whole family feel as angry as she felt. Let's see. And there is Ramona lying on the bed, kicking the wall. Whoa. Let's see. Uh, mean, mean, mean. She was glad her heels left marks on the wallpaper. Glad, glad, glad. Mother, Ramona's kicking the wall cried Tattletail Beezus, as if her mom didn't know what Ramona was doing. It's my wall too, mother. Ramona, though, did not care if Beezus tattled. She wanted her to tattle. Ramona wanted the whole world to know. She was so bad, she kicked the wall and left heel marks on the wallpaper. Ramona, if you're going to do that, you'd better take off your shoes. Mrs. Quimby's voice from the living room was tired but calm. Ramona, bang, 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 drummed harder to show everybody how bad she was. She would not take off her shoes. She was a terrible, wicked girl. Being such a bad, terrible, horrid, wicked girl made her feel good. She brought both heels against the wall at the same time. She was not the least bit sorry for what she was doing. She would never be sorry. Never, never, never. Ramona. Mr. Quimby's voice held a warning note. Ramona, do you want me to come in there? Ramona paused and considered. Did she want her father to come in? No, she did not. Her father, her mother, nobody could understand how hard it was to be a little sister. She drummed her heels a few more times to prove her spirit was not broken. Then she lay on her bed and thought wild, fierce thoughts until her mom came and silently helped her undress and get into her PJs and get into bed. When the light had been turned out, Ramona felt so limp and tired that she soon fell asleep. After all, she had no reason to try and stay awake because the tooth fairy was not coming to her house that night. The next morning, Mrs. Quimby walked into the girls' room and said briskly to Ramona, Which dress do you want to wear to school today? The empty space in her mouth and the heel marks on the wall above her bed reminded Ramona of all that had happened the day before. I'm not going to school today, she said, and reached for her play clothes, while her sister Beezus put on a fresh school dress. A terrible day had begun. No one said much at breakfast. Howie, who had recovered from his cold, cold stopped for Ramona on his way to school, and then went on without her. Ramona watched all the kids in the neighborhood go to school, and when the street was quiet, she turned on the TV set. Her mother turned it off, saying, 
little girls who don't go to school can't watch television. Ramon felt her mother did not understand. She wanted to go to school. She wanted to go to school more than anything in the whole wide world. But she could not go back when her teacher did not like her. Ramona got out her crayons and her paper, which someone had put away for her, and settled down to draw. She drew a bird, a cat, a ball in a row, and then with her red crayon, she crossed out the cat because it did not begin with the same sound as b b b bird and b b b ball. Afterward, she covered a whole sheet of paper with cues, Ramona Quimby style, with ears and whiskers. Ramona's mother did not feel sorry for Ramona. She merely said, Get your sweater, Ramona. I have to drive down to the shopping center. Ramona wished she had some money from the tooth fairy to spend. There followed the most boring morning of Ramona's entire life. She trailed along after her mom in the shopping center while Mrs. Quimby bought socks for, for Beezus, some buttons and thread, some pillowcases that were on sale, and a new extension cord for the waffle iron, some paper for Ramona to draw on, and a pattern for a new dress. Looking at patterns was the worst part. Ramona's mother seemed to sit for hours looking at the pictures of the boring, boring dresses. At the beginning of the shopping trip, Mrs. Quimby said, Ramona, you mustn't put your hands on things in stores. Later, she said, Ramona, please don't touch things. By the time they reached the pattern counter, she said, Ramona, how many times do I have to tell you? Keep your hands to yourself. When Mrs. Quimby had finally selected a pattern and they were leaving the store, who should they run into but Mrs. Whisser, a neighbor? Why, hello, exclaimed Miss Whisper, and there's Ramona. I thought a big girl like you would be going to kindergarten. Ramona had nothing to say. How old are you, dear? asked Mrs. Whisser. Ramona still had nothing to say to Mrs. Whisser, but she did hold up five fingers for the neighbor to count. Five, exclaimed Miss Whisser. What's the matter, dear? Has the cat got your tongue? Ramona stuck out her tongue just enough to show Mrs. Whisper, Whisser, that the cat had not indeed got it. <gasps> Miss, Mrs. Whisser gasped. Ramona! Mrs. Quimby was thoroughly exasperated. I am sorry, Mrs. Whisser. Ramona seems to have forgotten her manners. After this apology, she said angrily, Ramona Geraldine Quimby, don't you ever let me catch you doing such a thing again. But Mama, protested Ramona as she was dragged toward the parking lot. She asked me, and I was just showing. But there was no use in finishing the sentence, because Mrs. Quimby was not listening, and she probably would not have understood, even if she had listened. Mrs. Quimby and Ramona returned home in time to see Oh, in time to pass the morning kindergarten straggling along the sidewalk with their seat work papers to show their moms. Ramona got down on the floor of the car so the kids could not see her. Later that afternoon, Beezus brought Mary Jane home from school for a play date. How did you like kindergarten today, Ramona? asked Mary Jane in a bright tone. It told Ramona all too clearly. She already knew Ramona had not gone to school today. Why don't you be quiet, asked Ramona. I'll bet Henry Huggins isn't going to want to marry a girl who hasn't even finished kindergarten, teased Mary Jane. Oh, don't tease her, said Beezus, who might laugh at her sister herself, but was quick to protect her from others. Ramona went outside and rode her two-wheeled, lopsided tricycle up and down the sidewalk for a while, before she sadly removed Miss Binney's red ribbon, which she had woven through the spokes of her front wheel. The next morning, Mrs. Quimby took a dress out of Ramona's closet without a word. Ramona spoke. I'm not going to school, she said. 
Oh, Ramona, aren't you ever going to go back to kindergarten? Yes, said Ramona. Mrs. Quimby smiled. Good, let's make it today. But Ramona reached for her play clothes. No, I'm going to stay away until Miss Binnie forgets all about me, and then when I go back, she'll think I'm somebody else. Mrs. Quimby sighed <sighs> and shook her head. Ramona Quimby, Miss Binnie is not going to forget you. Yes, she will, insisted Ramona. She will if I stay away long enough. Some older kids on the way to school shouted, Drop out! as they passed the Quimby house. The day was long. Long one, uh, the day was a long, long, long one for Ramona. She drew some more seat work for herself, and afterward there was nothing to do but wander around the house, poking her tongue in the hole where her tooth was while she kept her lips shut tight. That evening, her father said, I miss my little girl's smiles. Ramona managed a tight-lipped smile that did not show the gap in her teeth. Later, she heard her father say something to her mom about, This nonsense has gone on long enough. And her mom answered with something about, Ramona has to make up her own mind that she wants to behave herself. And that's where I'm going to stop for today. And tomorrow, I'll finish the book. So hope you are all having a wonderful day or night. And uh, as for me and Keel, we're going to say goodbye. Can you say goodbye? Say goodbye. Can you look this way? Kila, this way. Hi. Hi. And that's my buddy Kila. See ya.